Hello everyone. Thank you for hanging out with me tonight. Right now I am doing a live stream. I'm thinking of leaving this video up on my channel, so I do want to let you know that this is a live stream. I am going to respond to some of your questions on things. I just got off of the live stream with Chris Hansen and it was intense. It was a lot more than I thought we were going to talk about. We talked a lot about my personal history and all of it related to Onision. And trust me, I get it. I know that a lot of you are not in the mood to hear about Onision again, but I've said it before and I'll say it again. I think it's important to call out predatory behavior, especially if someone is using a platform, YouTube, that I love so much for such nasty reasons. It just is not something that I want to stand for, and if I can contribute in any way to the conversation, which hopefully I was able to, I definitely want to do that. I definitely want to do that. I think it's important. So thank you for being in this live stream. Thank you for hanging out. Hannah, thank you for the super chat. You were so well spoken tonight. Well, I appreciate you saying that. I was a little nervous to go on the stream. I clicked over to see how many people were watching, and there were around 18,000 people watching live, and I have never in my life had that many people watching me live at once. I do live streams all the time, but that was a lot. That was a lot of eyeballs and a lot of pressure, and I just wanted to tell my story in a way that didn't come off as too insulting to people. You know, I, I feel so bad for the girls that have been victimized by Onision. I can't even begin to imagine. You know, so I don't want to put myself on their level at all. I am much older than those girls and did not have the experiences they had. The only reason I wanted to go on the show and why I accepted the invitation is because if I can add to the narrative in some way that helps them by building a stronger case against him, I am all in. I am all in. Thank you for all the kind words. Thank you, Luna, for the super chat. So much love and respect for you. Thank you. I, I do appreciate the support. I wasn't sure how it would be received. It seemed like it was received pretty well. Chris Hansen was very nice. We were in the live stream probably for about 40 minutes before it went live, just talking about some things we wanted to go over. He was telling me about his experience going to Onision's house. For those of you who don't know, Chris Hansen went to Onision's house. And I, don't, I never know what to call him. Greg, Onision, James, I feel like he has a hundred million different names. But Chris Hansen went to Onision's house and knocked on his door. And that is something that he has a history of doing. He finds predators, he knocks on their door and has them take a seat. And he did that for Onision. And Onision's response was to call the police. And if you have not already listened to that call, it is on YouTube. You can watch the, uh, watch the video of him or the the audio of him calling the police and it is hilarious he is clearly terrified out of his mind and <laughs> he's trying to explain to the police that it's chris hansen it's chris hansen he's knocking on my door and the police are like okay and first of all uh i think it's a pretty bad move for someone who is under a lot of heat right now for his predatory actions. I just think involving yourself with the police <laughs> is a bad move. Like you're giving them more reason to go after you. But if that's what he wants to do, hey, uh, go for it, Greg. Um, but the, the 911 call is really funny. So I, I suggest that you guys take a listen to that if you haven't. And I also suggest that you watch the interview. Oops, sorry. I suggest that you watch the interview that I had with Chris Hansen. We talked about a lot. Um, he had me pretty much do a deep dive into every interaction I've ever had with Onision. And it starts a long time ago, and I'm so embarrassed to say this, I plan on making a video in the future at some point where I kind of uh, make fun of myself. If you go to my first upload that I have ever made on YouTube, my first video, it's literally called my first YouTube video, by the way, brilliant title, I mention Onision. I mentioned Onision in it. This is back 
gosh, I know I created my channel in 2011, but I don't know when I posted that video, but it was 2011 or 2012. And I mentioned in that video that I'm, you know, a fan of Onision. And as embarrassing as that is, it just goes to show you that I knew of him for a long time. I've known of him for a long time. And the reason why I knew of his channel was because back then, especially, people weren't talking politics, religion. Uh, he was doing a lot of animal rights things, which is something that I was also very interested in. And that wasn't something that was common on YouTube. So obviously that is something that I take an interest in. A lot of my content revolves around those types of things. So when you find other people on YouTube talking about similar things, you find out who they are and you watch some of their videos. And that's kind of what I did at the very beginning. So fast forward years later in 2015, I get a DM from Onision. Now I was, I was following him on Twitter. So I had already kind of opened up the communication there. We had not communicated prior to him messaging me, but I was already following him. So when he followed me, he was able to just DM me right away. And he said that he had seen the video of me where I was outside of Comic-Con and I was debating some of the street preachers there that were holding up terrible signs about hell and uh, all that great stuff. And I, you know, challenged them. And he saw that video and he thought it was great. Obviously, you know, he does or used to do content on religion. So he liked that video and he reached out to me and offered to fly me out to his house in Seattle to collaborate with him. Now, it wasn't just me. He also flew Make Me Bad 35, Damien. He flew him out. He flew Hey Nadine out. So it was a group of four of us making videos together. Not great videos, by the way. I'm embarrassed. There were some like weird Batman skits that he had on his channel, and I did a skit on my channel that was like kind of dumb. Uh, but, you know, regardless, I, I did have a good time doing that, and that was my first time ever meeting him. It was some of my first interactions with him, and I didn't really think much of it. Um, him and his spouse were fighting at the time. They had this bizarre agreement that he would give her $100 any time he did something terrible or, or called her a name or something, which is messed up. They had a son that I played with. He was really cute, and I, I feel bad for... There's a, I guess there's another kid now. I feel bad for the kids involved with all of this. But that was pretty much my experience with him. He had a, a moment of, of it being uncomfortable with Nadine because he was really, really angry with her. Like, angry in a way that doesn't make sense. He was so angry with her because she was wearing high heels. <laughs> I don't know, he just, you know, women shouldn't be wearing high heels because it's bad for your arch support, and therefore I deem them bad and no woman should wear high heels. And it was just so judgmental and controlling in, in a, a very strange way. So that's a huge red flag. And that was kind of it. That was, that was the extent of my experience there. It was overall a positive experience. Until that point, I really hadn't had many people that I knew on YouTube that I could make videos with and collaborate with. So having the opportunity to work with people, especially someone that I had been watching for so long, I was excited about it. Uh, I think anybody would be. It seemed at the time like not a bad thing. I will say, and this is where it gets a little weird, uh, I will say that when I was there, we did have some moments, not a lot, because we honestly were working almost the entire time I was there filming videos. But there were some moments of downtime when we were eating or something where we would kind of talk about life. And at the time, I was uh, going through a breakup, and I opened up a little bit about my insecurities with relationships and things. And he knew. He knew that that was a weak point for me, that I had relationships prior that had, you know, men that were unfaithful and that that was an insecurity of mine and I had some self-worth issues and I did, I did talk about that. And now looking back on that experience, that conversation's a little disturbing for a few reasons. First of all, it's disturbing because one of the videos we did was a skit I guess it was supposed to be funny, of a girl that was in an abusive relationship, and I played the girl. Ugh. And it, it was so bad to the point where I was pretending to, like, be held back and punched and on the floor and getting kicked, and I get it was, it was supposed to be funny and it was all in jest, but 
now looking back and, and knowing the kind of person he is now, it's very disturbing, I, I would say. It's kind of disturbing thinking about that interaction. Um, and I had a, a guy that, like I said, I was going through a breakup that did not want to let go of the relationship. He would show up to my apartment he would break into my apartment complex and leave notes on my car and refuse to stop calling. And it was, it was ridiculous to the point where I had to block this person out. He knew that I was at Onision's house when we were doing all those collaborations. And he reached out to somebody trying to get Onision's address so that he could send me flowers while I was there, I guess, in some kind of hope that we would get back together. Really weird. And Onision knew about it. And he even was like, this is super creepy. This guy... It's bad news. Stay away from him. So remember that. It will it will come into play later. Um, so when I left Onision's house, it didn't... Nothing really stood out to me to worry about. There weren't big enough red flags for me to leave and be uncomfortable with that trip. It was fine. It was whatever. Fast forward a couple of months, six months or so, and... I, through my, my YouTube network, sometimes YouTube networks will connect you with other creators to collaborate. Uh, they connected me with someone that I eventually started dating, my last relationship, and that was after the, the creepy guy. I started dating um, someone else, and the one I was seeing before really did not like that I had moved on, and that led to more stalking and weird messages and it was very uncomfortable for me. Very uncomfortable. Onision got to a point where I guess the guy that I was dating at the time he did not like and he just he tweeted out some like very broad thing about how anybody who has any association with this person is dead to me and not only are they dead to me they're a bad person because only bad people associate with this person and it was just over the top kind of controlling. So whenever he found out that I was dating this guy, when Onision found out, he lost his mind. And it was weird because he had never hit on me. He had never flirt on, flirted with me. He had never said anything that made me feel uncomfortable in that way. So it's strange that he would take such an interest in my personal life to the point of like harassing me endlessly online. It didn't make sense. It seemed like something that a crazy ex would do, not something that like a guy that you briefly worked with would do. It was just too much of an interest for knowing me so shortly. You know what I mean? It was very strange. Thank you, uh, Levi, by the way, for the super chat. I see you leaving super chats. I appreciate you very much. Um, <laughs> so it was just strange, you know, and then you guys know, I we had videos that I made about Onision you know, trying to defend myself, and then he would come back at me, and it was all very nasty. And the thing that was the strangest part of all of it was that he was, like, obsessed with my... <laughs> he was obsessed with my boobs in a very unhealthy way. He, like, made videos talking about me uh, on the internet. He would talk even about my height. He would say that I was too tall. Um, he would say that I was too skinny. He would just flat out call me ugly. It was ridiculous. It was so stupid and ridiculous and over the top. And I, you know, it's whatever. I kind of forgot about it because it's Onision. He does dumb stuff all the time. Like, who cares? I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna lose sleep over it. So I just put it in the past and I moved on. I didn't really think anything about it. And you guys kind of know the story from there. You know, all of our internet drama and how stupid it was. And he, he does this thing where he goes in phases and now he does this with everybody online. Everybody he's ever known online, he does this with where he's terrible to them and then decides he's done with the negativity. Does this like fake apology saying that I'm different. I'm better now. I see what I did wrong and I'm sorry. But then he'll turn around a few months later and do shitty things again. So clearly he's never sorry. But then he'll be shitty and then apologize and be shitty and apologize. And it's this endless cycle of him being disingenuous. So 
I tried to give him the benefit of the doubt a few times and just move on and be like, whatever, if you're sorry, that's fine. I don't really want anything to do with you, but I'm moving on. And I shouldn't have done that. I should never have, I should never have done that Skype with him. Uh, you know, I, I did the one debate trying to defend a friend of mine. And that was fine, but then I did another one later on that I, I shouldn't have, because I shouldn't have given him the time of day. I should not have had a face-to-face -face conversation with him via Skype. That was a bad idea. You know, and I have a lot of regrets. I regret the collaboration. I regret that. I regret all my interactions with Onision, but there's nothing I can do to go back and fix those things. I'm just speaking out about my experiences now. So, you know, fast forward past all that, you saw the video I made with Blair. I made a video with Blair because Onision sent her and I both the same email. He actually sent the same email to Repsion as well. And I think also to Chris Hansen. He sent Chris Hansen the same email. So he's just desperate to get people to stop exposing him online, that he sent us all the same email. But he did send me one prior to that. It was really disturbing that I will read for you. Um, thank you really quick, M. Gray. Thank you for the super chat. And Mr. DJ Fly High, thank you for the super chat. Uh, I appreciate you guys supporting my channel. It does, it does mean a lot. Um, <laughs> so I do want to read this email that he sent me. And I would love to hear your guys' thoughts in the comments. Thank you, Thomas, for the super chat. I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments and see what you make of this. I felt creeped out by it. I think it's pretty disturbing, but let me know what you guys think in the comments. This is something that he sent me October 23rd, 2019. Now keep in mind, he knew about my stalkery ex. He knew that that was weird. He agreed with me that that was weird. Um, but he came to LA and they hung out. And they posted online that they were hanging out. And I remember seeing that and being like, what the hell? You know, two, two individuals together that have both been very creepy towards me. Uh, it's just not a combination that I think anyone would see and be like, yay! It was something that I was concerned about, to be honest. It, it made me uncomfortable. Um, and then he sends me this email, like, over a year later year and a half, I don't know. Um, but this is, like I said, October 23rd, 2019. So this past October. It's titled, Hey Jacqueline, remember how we did a Skype a while back and just talked about things? Like most of it I think was about the breakup with your most recent ex. I wanted to do a Skype with you about something I think I probably should have told you a long time ago. It's about the ex with flowers that was like stalkerish. But I don't want it recorded or passed on or anything. What I get out of it is a personal question answered. What happened was really awkward. He and I had that, uh, an awkward moment that he and I had that I wanted to kind of figure out because it was weird and it involves your location at the time. I know this is all very odd sounding, but it would be cool to clear it up person to person and basically let you know what happened that dot 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 no one knows about but me and two other people. This is formatted really hard. Like, it's a, a weird way to, to read. He formatted it. It's super strange. There's, like, dashes, and it's strange. Um, so that kind of bothered me, because for him to say it involves my location at the time, when he's spending time with someone that would literally show up at my apartment, uninvited, break into the complex, leave notes on my car, and then Onision goes and spends time with him and says, something happened that involved your location at the time. That's not going to... <laughs> that's not gonna make anyone feel comfortable um, it's not a big deal I just figured you would want to know not as a youtuber or anything but as a person like real life anyway if you want to talk again not to be passed on via video or anything on either of our channels not on social media nothing just for two people to talk so you in your own life know what happened again I cannot stress enough not for any public reason confidential etc let me know Sometimes we forget you and I are both people with real issues in our lives that don't impact or reflect on the internet. Like I have this whole thing with you publicly, beef or whatever, but in reality I still care about your safety slash who you are, so I want to sort this out. 
But again, if you ignore this, I do not at all think you are not safe. The topic has passed, and if you don't want to talk, I'm sure you're fine. Just figured you'd want to know about what's been in the back of my mind for a while regarding what happened regarding you and what your ex tried to have me do. Please, please don't share any of this. I'm not trying to be at odds with him. I just want you to know that's it. That is the email that I got. I uh, have not responded. I, I have cut off communication. Like, Onision was relentlessly texting me. I had to literally make videos saying, you need to stop texting me. You need to back off. Um, so I eventually had his number blocked. So emailing me is the only way he can reach me. I have not responded to anything. So I don't know how you guys feel. Um, creepy. Yeah, it seems like everyone, everyone seems to think it's creepy. It is. You know, when you get an email like that, that it involves my location and he mentioned my safety twice, it just is very uncomfortable. But... I, I do want to say, because I, I see some people worried in the chat, uh, this is not something that I'm concerned about right now because I have moved. That is not a place, you know, that I am currently residing any longer. So whatever information he may have known about my location at the time is no longer relevant. So that makes me feel a lot better. But it's still really uncomfortable to think about whatever that conversation could have been or what he was trying to have Onision do or I don't know. All of it is just, it sounds off. But I did talk about that on, uh, on Chris Hansen's live stream. I think the stream went pretty well. It seemed like we kind of agreed. You know, he asked me over and over again what kind of person does these things? You know, what kind of person thinks it's okay to make a video talking about your boobs or make a video saying that your parents don't love you or, you know, make videos celebrating when you find out that you got cheated on and you're crying and you're obviously devastated. And, you know, Onision just takes that as an opportunity to pat himself on the back and say, I told you so and I'm always right. What kind of person does those things? And I, I can't answer that. I don't... It's hard for my brain to comprehend that kind of behavior. I feel like probably most people feel that way. It's, it's hard. I can't relate to it. It's just so, so bizarre. So, I don't know. You guys can answer that in the comments. What do you think? You know, what kind of person does these things and thinks it's okay? What kind of person behaves in this way? You know, I think... Obviously, my interactions with him, although they were stressful, although they did make me uncomfortable, they're obviously nothing even remotely close to what other girls have gone through. And I just feel so terrible. I can't imagine. Especially Sarah, you know. They have... They had this girl who had problems at home to the point where... Onision and his spouse took legal custody of her because she was a minor. They took custody of her. So imagine being in that situation where you're trying to get away from home and you think these people are good people and you already have, you know, family issues, which is tough. And then to go from that into a place that you think is safe only to be preyed upon in a sexual way, I just, ugh, I hope, I hope that something happens to prevent this from ever happening to anybody else ever again. I am sad, it breaks my heart that a platform that I love so much, you know, YouTube actually does mean a lot to me, it's sad to me to think that a platform like this facilitates someone like him in prey on young girls. Uh, Chris Hansen also brought up Susan, CEO of YouTube, and asked what I thought about her because she will appear on other people's streams, she will appear on other people's channels, 
but has not agreed to speak with him. I don't understand. Uh, you know, I, under, I, I, I do get that it's a sensitive topic, and whenever you are trying to make a PR move and you're appearing on all of these channels uh, to make people like you, to appear like a more likable person, because that's something she struggled with, you know, I, I don't understand why you wouldn't take the opportunity to speak with Chris Hansen, why you wouldn't take the opportunity to pull someone like Onision off of YouTube. Imagine, imagine the response that she would get if she actually stepped up and did something. People would love her. She would be a hero. There's, I can't imagine any scenario, any reality in which that move would not be incredibly helpful for her. But she doesn't do it. She shies away from it. It is so confusing to me. Thank you, Dorian, for the super chat. I'll let you know if I'm ever in Denver. That's very sweet of you. <laughs> but thank you guys, by the way, for being so supportive. Um, I was kind of nervous to go on Chris Hansen's <laughs> live stream. Like I said, there were around 18,000 people watching me live, and that I think is enough to make anybody a, a little a little nervous, that many eyeballs. But like I said, I'm happy to contribute to the conversation. I think that it went really well. Um, hopefully, I hope they're building some kind of case and they can take all of these interviews and put them together to paint a picture of what kind of guy Onision is and hopefully that in some way will help remove him from the platform, you know? Remove him from having the ability to hurt somebody else, you know? Because if he sticks around, which unless he can't, he will, he, there's going to be another. There will be another girl that gets hurt. And I am, you know, it, it doesn't even matter how loud we are on the internet. He'll find a way. And I just, <laughs> come on, Susan. Come on, YouTube. Come on. Step it up. And also, Kai. People don't talk about Kai enough. And that's another thing that Chris brought out to me. He's like, you know, all these people are focusing on, Onis on Onision. Do you think Kai is a predator? And while I can sympathize to a degree that being married to Onision would be hell, and I'm sure it would take an emotional toll on anyone, a psychological toll on anyone, that doesn't absolve you from doing the things that's, that's going on. Like, it just does not, you know, as much as I feel for, for how horrible that situation must be, it doesn't excuse sending nude photos to somebody who's a minor and asking for them in return. You know, that's illegal. <laughs> Very illegal. And I don't see how you could call that behavior anything other than predatory. And I do think more people need to talk about that side of things. You know, everybody focuses so much on Onision and that's, you know, important. He does deserve to be held accountable, but there's also another person there's another person contributing to this, facilitating this. So, I, I do want that to be more of a focus. Thank you, Knowledge, for the super chat. I, I really do appreciate it. And Drahawk, hopefully I'm saying your name right. Thank you for the super chat. Um, was actually wondering when you get a chance to air your thoughts to Chris Hansen, and it strikes me as Susan is either in denial or embarrassed. But, but why? It's not like, you know, it's kind of like the same thing of whenever, when I post a video about something, I cannot control the comments. I cannot control what people say. If somebody says something horrible in the comment section of one of my videos, it's not on me. You know? And the same thing applies to Susan. She can't control what people post on YouTube. You know, they can try to put restrictions here and there and monitor it to some degree, but there are thousands and thousands of videos uploaded every hour. You know, so it's impossible to keep a close eye on every single thing that's posted. So no one, no one is holding her accountable, even for a channel as large as his. No one's going to hold her accountable for what he's doing. No one's going to say, Susan, this is your fault. But she still has the power. She has the power 
something, to, you know, to do something about this, to actually remove a threat. And I, I do want to be very clear. I am not a fan of censorship. I, I absolutely am not. If somebody has an opinion that I don't like, if somebody says something that I disagree with, more power to them. You have you have every right to say whatever you want on the internet, and I don't think the channel should be deleted or people should be removed if they have differing opinions. I, I'm certainly not advocating for that, but I think in the case of predatory behavior, something does need to be done. I don't think that that applies. I have seen people trying to argue that angle, saying, oh, well, you just don't like Onision, so you want his channel to be removed, and that's censorship. I strongly, strongly disagree. I strongly disagree. There are tons of people, like, you know, even even these channels on YouTube that I talk about frequently, the Paul and Morgans of the world, the Girl Defines, like, I would never, I would never suggest that their channels get removed. You know, but someone like Onision, who is using the platform to actively seek out underage people to take advantage of, I think something needs to be done. And think about it, like, YouTube... Kids use YouTube. It, the demographic appeals to a younger audience. So it's almost like you're taking all these people and being like, here you go, Onision, take your pick. Come on, Susan. Do something. Do something. Chris asked me if I, if I could say something to Onision, what would it be? And I said, get help. And I know that sounds condescending and I'm not trying I'm not trying to be holier than thou because I think a lot of times it's like when someone condescendingly says I'm praying for you or I hope you get help like it doesn't sound great but in the most genuine way I truly do hope that for him I hope that you know sometimes you need that in life I think a professional could be very valuable to him I also hope that he takes a look inward and really considers the damage that he's done to these girls. A little bit of self-reflection could go a long way. So that is something that I think about. And I'm just hopeful that at some point he does the right thing. Truly. Because you never know. You never know what could happen if he's finally held accountable. And I think that's what everybody wants. I do think that's what everybody wants. I think the, the internet is being weird right now, so I'm trying to make sure that the stream is going well. But it might not be. Hmm. But thank you guys for hanging out with me. Thank you for all people leaving super chats. Thank you for everybody who, you know, has been saying positive things. Like I said, you know, I, I totally understand, totally get it. I totally get it that people are real, real tired of talking about Onision. I totally understand. But at the same time, you have to consider that being a voice in this area of YouTube that's creepy with people using the platform for negative things, like being a voice is valuable. And I apologize for, for driving this conversation into the ground, but I think a lot of us are. A lot of, a lot of creators are, and I think it's good. I think it's good to do that. Because until, he, until he's gone, until, until the threat has been removed, I think people should keep talking about it. Absolutely, 100%. So, let me know what you guys think. Do you, are you also of the same mindset? Do you feel like more people need to talk about it? I certainly do. So. Thank you guys, by the way, for the super chats. I'm, I'm gonna eventually scroll through and uh, say hi to everyone. I do see you all though, and I, I appreciate, I appreciate the support, I appreciate the kind words. 
Uh, let me know if you guys have any questions. I'm going to wrap this stream up in a little bit. But I am thankful for you hanging out with me. I'm thankful for you, you know, standing up with me. I think even like watching something like this or sharing things like this or participating in the conversation, I think it moves it along. It certainly does. So thank you guys for hanging out. I don't know what else uh, to go over. I am embarrassed that I've ever worked with Onision. I'm embarrassed that I ever publicly kind of forgave him for some of the things that he's done. I will say that, you know, it's hard for me. It's hard for me to forgive what he does to other people. I think it was easy for me to move past the stuff that he did to me because that's, I try to be a forgiving person. It was a mistake in this case. I try to be a forgiving person because Honestly, even for myself, it gives me peace of mind. It gives me peace of mind to let go of, of anger, to let go of resentment. And I thought, you know, if he truly was apologizing and, and bettering himself, that I wouldn't give it a chance in the sense of, of allowing somebody like that back into my life. But I would be like, just truce and end it. And that's kind of what I wanted. That's truly what I wanted. You know, and that's why I did that that Skype public conversation with him because I thought I thought we could get to a point where that was the end of it. But <laughs> boy, was I wrong. You know, a lot more drama happened beyond that that I don't really want to get into. So I'm going to be extremely vague. But you guys know I had a friend that I was trying to help, and he directly intervened when he had been for so long pretending like he super cared about this person. He was harassing me. He was harassing my friends to do something to help our friend. And then whenever he had the chance to actually help us by not intervening, like we didn't even need him to do anything. We needed him to not harass us and intervene in the situation. And he couldn't do it. You know, he, he opted to try to make the situation worse. That's not, that's, that to me is the worst thing he's ever done. The worst thing he's ever done. You know, you can, you can call me ugly you can be creepy and talk about my boobs. You can throw yourself a party whenever you find out that I got cheated on. But when you get in the way of me helping somebody that I care about, and it's a really important situation, that is not ever forgivable. Especially since he kept talking about how he cared. He didn't care. I honestly struggle to believe that he truly cares about anybody other than himself, which is scary when you think about the fact that he has two kids. That terrifies me. I do worry about those kids. I worry about them a lot. Imagine, you know, kids, like I said, I said this earlier, the internet kind of caters to a younger audience. A lot of kids, a lot of underage people are, are using YouTube, they're on the internet. So how long is it going to be until one of his kids goes online and sees what their father has been doing? Imagine, imagine that. Imagine finding out that your father has been predatory to all of these girls. And, and you can watch them. You can see their story. You can see the pain in their eyes. That would mess anybody up. That'd be really hard. That'd be very difficult. So I worry about them. I really hope that enough evidence can be scraped together so that the police can actually do something to make him pay for what he's done. I, I, am, I don't like thinking about somebody like him being just still out there. You know, he's still on YouTube. The only way to make sure that he doesn't hurt anybody else is to take away the means that he has to do so. And the biggest platform he uses is YouTube. So Susan, step it up, girl. Do something. She can. And hopefully the police, you know, legally are able to do something at some point in the near future as well. And that's why I think you know, as, as small of a contribution as it may be, that's why I think going on Chris Hansen's stream and everybody who has been a part of that conversation, I think it helps. I think it paints a picture of who he is. And if the time comes 
that he's maybe in court or something like that, I think all of this together will build a stronger case. So nothing but love to everybody who's been a part of this, uh, everybody who's made videos, everybody who's been on Chris Hansen's streams, everybody who's watched them, everybody who's left comments, everybody who's sent encouraging things to the girls he has hurt, you know, thanks. Thank you for being a part of it. But I think I'm going to, uh, with that, I'm going to end this stream. I'm going to leave it up on my channel for those who missed it. And I also think it is kind of interesting to hear my final thoughts on it. I'm sure a lot of people are going to go back and watch Chris Hansen's stream with me. And, you know, this is a nice recap of that. Uh, I'm glad you guys enjoyed it. I'm thankful that you're all being so supportive, and I will see you on the internet soon. All right.